What's going on guys, Super Insane 18 here, and today I am bringing you another branded Despia deck profile. I just took third at the OTS Back to Duel event at my locals. It was, I believe, just shy of 50 players. I think the number that they said was 48. I could be wrong. I know it was definitely more than 40, uh, but I did take third. My only loss was to Sword Soul, but realistically the Sword Souls didn't win it. It was a rivalry of the Warlords in game three. So I performed really well with this deck and it's different from my last two profiles. So I want to give you guys a bit of an update. Let's go ahead and and jump on in. So starting things off, we do have our two copies of Fallen of Albaz. This is another card that I think you need a bare minimum of two. Uh, at the start of this format, when the deck first came out, a lot of the good players were only playing one. But now if you look at any of the topping lists, they are playing two to three. So definitely a card you need more than one copy of. We have our one copy of Despian Comedy. This is just kind of utility. Um, it really didn't come up all that much three copies of Despian Tragedy. This is a change from our previous lists. Uh, in previous lists, we only ran this at two, but I think three is definitely more correct. Um, this card is just insane. It's the best searcher in the deck. It lets you recur your spells from your graveyard, uh, so I wouldn't run this at less than three moving forward. We have our three copies of Alibur, pretty standard. Uh, hopefully you guys can get them now that they are reprinted in Ghosts from the Past 2. We have our one copy of Ad Libitum, and then we have one copy of Albion the Shrouded Dragon. Now, Albion is a new addition, and I'm going to be honest, it didn't really come up all that much for me. Um, I'm playing it based on the recommendation of a player that is actually better than me, So, uh, but according to him, it's how you play through Ash on the Branded Fusion. Personally, I'm not really sure how. Uh, he won't give me an answer, but hopefully I can get that answer. If you guys know how this card helps you play through uh, the Ash, go ahead and let me know in the comments, because this is all about learning. That's the point of this channel you know i want to teach you guys i want you guys to teach me so if you know what this card is mainly for go ahead and tell me uh the only use i can see for it is maybe being an extra draw but if i'm wrong go ahead and let me know down below then on to the next set of monsters we have one alistair the invoker one fairy tale snow and one incredible ecclesia uh the ecclesia is another new addition from my last profile the effect to summon the albaz never came up honestly uh, but the ability to add itself back to your hand came up almost every game uh, just because it's a really good discard fodder for anything that requires a discard. Um, you get to just kind of pitch it and then it comes back to your hand for free, so it essentially replaces itself, uh, but that's really the only use that ha I had for it. It really wasn't that important. Um, then we have one Spriggan's Kit and one Tri Brigade More Carrier. These are also some uh, changes from the last profile. The Spriggan's Kit is essentially just a fourth Aluber, um, and the Mercurier is really cool because you can search it off of Branded Lost and it acts as a hand trap, being able to just negate any monster effect, uh, including like things like Nibiru or card effect or monster effects that don't activate on field. Uh, so that's really a cool uh, selling point for it is it's literally any monster effect. Uh, then we have three copies of Edgemp Chain. Uh, this is another change. I was only playing two. Bumping this up to three is probably the most significant change that I made to the list. Uh, having this at three came up so many times uh, just because it's really good to be used as like a dark material for a fusion, uh, being able to actually resolve your... Uh, Fright for Patchwork later on in the game if you open any copies of these. Like, it, it, I definitely recommend playing this at 3. This is the most important change that I saw while playing the event, so definitely something that I would say. Uh, on to our one ofs we have Branded Lost, another new addition from our last profile. Uh, this is kind of like a fourth copy of Magical Meltdown, with the added ability that you can 1. search it off of your Aluber or your Spriggans, uh, and 2. you can also search for any card that lists Albaz in its text or Fallen of Albaz itself. Uh, so this will let you get like your Tri Brigade Mercurier, so you can play around certain cards like Nibiru or Gamma or other uh, very impactful hand traps. Uh, we have the one Call by the Grave, the one Foolish Burial, the one Gold Sark, and the one Invocation. Uh, and that's really going to round out our one ofs. Then on to the two ofs, we have two Branded in Red. Uh, I still don't think that this card is necessarily good at three, just because it's requiring a Despia in the graveyard. Uh, so opening this card and having nothing else in your hand is kind of bad, because uh, you can't do anything unless you're, you have a way to put the Despia in the grave. Um, but I have seen a lot of lists run three, so take that with a grain of salt. I personally just think it's best at two. 
Then another new addition, we have the two Forbidden Droplet. This came up once and it won me the game, so I feel like that's just enough to keep it in the deck. Um, but I mean, it really didn't come up that much, so again, take that with a grain of salt. We have our two copies of Polymerization because we are still playing the uh, Fright for engine. Uh, and that's going to be it for the two ofs. On to our three ofs, we have three Branded Fusion, which is obvious. Three Branded Opening, which again, the e of the deck, there's no reason you wouldn't play three. We have our three Patchwork, just because it's a plus one that gets you into a Poly and a Fusion material. We have our three Meltdown, even though we only play the one Alistair. The ability to just tell your opponent they're not allowed to negate your fusion effects and they can't respond when you summon a fusion, uh, really cool. And then we have our three Super Poly. Uh, no hand traps, just Super Poly, because pretty much anything you're playing against these days, you're going to be able to Super Poly something away, even if you have to like waste your normal summon just to be able to Super Poly, it's worth it to clear your opponent's board. Um, and that's going to be the main deck at 45 cards. Let's show you guys the extra. So starting things off with the extra, we have our one copy of Lubellion and two copies of Mirror Jade. Uh, I'm still kind of on the fence whether or not I want to play two Lubellion, um, just in case it gets stopped, but playing four essentially magical meltdowns with the three meltdowns and the one lost, uh, more often than not, they're not going to be able to stop this, so you can put it back and always kind of guarantee that you're able to get the second Mirror Jade, um, but the only real reason to run more than one of these is if you're afraid of it getting stopped, which at this point I'm really not. Uh, I never missed the second one, but the second Mirror Jade did come up all the time, so that's why I bumped the Mirror Jade to two. It was only a one in the previous profile. We have three copies of Albion the Branded Dragon. Uh, I what or two copies, not three. Uh, I was playing it at three, but I bumped it down to two because I needed to make room for some additional cards that you'll see, uh, which one of them is actually the Sprint of the Iron Dash Dragon. Uh, I'm not really sold on this card yet, but the reason that I decided to play it is uh, about a week or two ago at my locals, I topped because I essentially just contact see my way into victory. Uh, this deck is very heavy at my locals. A lot of people are playing it. So I would give them the contact C and then they wouldn't be able to go into anything. So everybody started picking up contact C and this is really kind of the best out because uh, it just requires an effect monster that was special summoned this turn. So if they contact C you, you can fuse it into this just to kind of get rid of the contact C. Um, but it's also just another target to send off of your Mirror Jade, so do with that what you will. Uh, then we have one copy of Titanoclad, the Ash Dragon. This is actually really cool. Uh, you're almost never going to make it. It's always going to be sent off your Mirror Jade because in the end phase, you can either add or summon your Fallen of Albaz. And if you summon your Fallen of Albaz, you can essentially super poly their board because the Fallen of Albaz will let you fuse using materials on their side of the field. And they're probably going to have something that you can go into. So it's just kind of a super poly on the end of your opponent's turn, which I think is neat. Then we have the one Despian Quiridus and the one Despian Proskenian. Uh, this is just for OTK. This is kind of like a niche super poly target. Um, I've never actually made this using my own monsters. It's always super poly to clear multiple targets from my opponent's board and then like reborn a DPE or another fusion in the mirror match. Um, I'm still on the fence about this card, but I think it's definitely worth continuing to try. It did come up in one of my matches. I was against uh, Cyber Dragon Branded and I was able to get rid of his Verte, his... Uh, what is it, his Verte, his Infinity, and whatever I normal summoned. I think it was like a comedy or something, uh, just because I needed a Despia for the material. Uh, then we are playing Double Masquerade, the Blazing Dragon. This is another change. I was only playing one, but I think this card at two is incredible. Against anything playing the Adventure Engine, you're going to burn them for anywhere from 6,000 to 7,200, just for them to establish a Wander and Griffin Rider, which is hilarious. Uh, it's going to be 72 if they have to use the Enchantress, only 6,000 if they start with the right. But I mean, that's still funny as hell. Um, the other thing was in my final round, I was against Eldritch and I had Double Masquerade, and he activated Cursed Eldritch. Land, had to pay 1200 to activate it then another 1200 to activate the effect and then the 800 that's needed for the cost so he paid 3200 just to activate Eldland, and that was really funny to me uh also won me the game so i mean there's that uh, we have our one copy of Invoked Kaliga. Uh, this is just a card that a lot of meta decks have a very hard time getting over if you end on Kaliga mirror jade you're pretty much set, and if you have the Branded in red, you're even better, because then if they out the Kaliga somehow, like if they have like Imperm or Book of Moon or whatever, it doesn't matter, uh, you can just brand it in red and Chimera, and then get your Mirror Jade back if you had the Ad Libidum, and I mean, I've shown you guys that combo before, uh, but definitely an incredible card. Um, 
we have our one Dragos Topelia, just standard, and then finishing it out, we have our two copies of Guardian Chimera, and that's gonna do it for the extra deck. And there you guys have it, that is actually going to be my third variation of the Branded Despia deck. The deck is always evolving and it is always changing based on the meta, so I'm still excited to bring you guys even more content for this deck. It is definitely the hottest deck right now and honestly a lot of fun to play. If you enjoyed it, you know the deal. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, comment, share with your friends, and maybe consider supporting me on Patreon because for just a dollar you can support the channel in a way that I would never be able to tell you how much I fully appreciate. Not to mention, if you wanted to see the side deck for this deck, it will be posted on on my Patreon later today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.